Sorry about that. I don't know about Zoom that well. <laughs> Thank you, Roddy, for helping me with that. Um, uh, I'm Ken. So if you don't, don't, don't know me, I'm the uh, VP at, uh, at Interop Medical, and uh, I'm really looking after the products and the corporate strategy of the company, uh, and also looking at the commercial side of it. So I kind of bring both both aspects to the discussion. Uh, so thank you for inviting me. And um, a little bit about the company. Uh, we we were founded by Varian and Siemens Radiotherapy Division staff, I guess you would say, uh, about almost three decades ago now. Uh, and so what they did really was back at that time, X-band systems were kind of a new novel thing in the Bay Area. And so they, they set about trying to uh, commercialize those into interoperative space. Making a, making a small compact uh, X-band system and make it go into the operating room. And now we're on the third generation Mobitron shipping with modern upgrades for IORT, motorized uh, drive systems and automatic docking systems and so on. And, and we've also recently introduced a um, superficial version of that system for derm, derm applications and then flash into both product, uh, product sides of that offering. Uh, wh why did we do this? Why, why flash? As you probably know, it's a rare chance to expand the window, the therapy window in radiotherapy. Uh, we feel like uh, both product lines could benefit from Flash. Uh, Flash could be used in intraoperative to treat very difficult advanced cancers, maybe dirty where you know you're gonna have a dirty uh, resection margin and maybe estimate the dose past dose limiting structures and that sort of thing, as well as in the derm space where lesions are superficial, you could uh, keep a patient from undergoing a, trend, a disfiguring Mohs procedure or something and have a very convenient and good outcome. So we feel like both product lines could be benefited from Flash. So ultimately, really, what we're looking at doing to begin with is a, a lower MEV. Everyone else today has been talking about how, you know, deep lesions and, and the, how to go after the, the, the lung lesion, the prostate lesion, and so on. What we're just focusing on here, to begin with anyway, are lower MEV treatments for shallow intermediate lesions. Uh, they, they cover a lot of indications, though. Worldwide, in over 20 countries, we are addressing all these different disease types with IORT for almost three decades now, and, and now we've expanded into skin. And in skin, I, a lot of people don't realize uh, the solid tumor market that, that most radiotherapy addresses is about a million or so patients a year. This is five and a half million cases a year that are done in some way. The, bar chart, the pie chart on the right describes the half its Mohs and so on ablation. And radiotherapy is very underrepresented there. And so we've been driving to try and make that more available for those cases that are really not good surgical candidates. Um, and we're getting a lot of positive uh, feedback on that. So we felt like Flash could play in both these, both these product sets. Uh, we all know, everyone's talked all day about what Flash electrons are. And we, uh, it, what our system offers is six and nine MEV treatments with Flash on a mobile platform and dose rates up to up to 1300 grays per second and as low as 40 grays per second and field sizes up to 10 centimeters. And that's this is a tank demonstrating um, what the system, the video of uh, the, uh, the system operating in flash mode. Um, we know the beam structure looks like this. Christopher Peterson and others have talked about this. A typical LAC beam structure, this example here shows a, a four microsecond pulse, uh, 10 grays in the pulse. So this would be a 30 degree delivery with three pulses. So this is a very, very typical electron lamp uh, fine beam structure. Um, we offer it in configurations of three different ways for customers to buy that. And I know someone, Carol, or someone was saying they were surprised to hear uh, it's going as far as that. I mean, we, we, I'll show you in a moment. We sold five of we put place five of these this year. And you can get, you can choose the way you get it. You can get it in flash only as a dedicated irradiator. And in that setup, you get two flash channels at six and nine MeV. At that, at that high dose rate range, and then you get one conventional channel as a standard to calibrate against. And of course, that system would be upgradable to uh, any of the, the two uh, clinical platforms. Uh, and then, of course, you can also choose a, a system if, you, if you're not going to keep the flash system busy all the time, and you wouldn't maybe keep the clinical system busy all the time, you can share its use. So we even offer a version where you can get the clinical system, either the scan or the IRT system, and then add a flash controller to it, and it can be shared usage. Uh, clinically making some money and paying for itself and then also being uh, doing flash research. So this has been a very popular um, way to approach the market. Uh, and we've had a lot of positive feedback from this as our last year has indicated. Um, when you choose one of these two platforms, either the IORT on the left here or the, or the scan or superficial on the right, you, you, you basically have to choose the collimation system you want to use to try to deliver the electrons. On the left, you see the system automatically docking itself to some 
known known fiducial just seeing on the top of the collimator flange in, a, in an IRT setting. And on the right, you can see the, 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 uh, the typical superficial uh, collimation system, we call it the Quick Connect 360, with modern day upgrades for optical uh, time of flight for distance measurement, uh, lots of various shapes and so on, so that you could it basically modernize and makes convenient what is an old clunky electron uh, system on a, on a large format NI. Um, so it makes it very fast and easy to do high volume derm treatments on that system. The, uh, the modifications when you do get the flash controller, you get a little switches, you get some little toggle switches to put it into physics mode. And when in physics mode, this, this pulse structure control user interface, this box with two knobs come up. And those knobs essentially let you control the fine beam structure, the pulse rate frequency and the pulse width so if you see this table here, it shows you the standard system in the middle of our flash system on the right. In the standard system, you get six, nine, and 12 MeV out of this portable system. It's set by default at 1.6 microseconds and 30 pulses per second. You control the dose with monitor units just like every other LINAC, and you have dual ion chambers and time as your dose control. On the flash system, you get six and nine channels at flash, and you get one, you choose either six or nine for your conventional as a calibration standard. And then you go to the box and you change it from 0.5 to four microseconds as the pulse width and you change the pulse frequency from 10 to 125 Hertz. And you, so your dose delivery then becomes a software screen that pops up when you go to physics mode, you put in the number of pulses you want and it just delivers that number of pulses only. So you know, you need to know your calibrated pulse, dose per pulse. And then you, if you put in three you're, and there's 10 grades per pulse, you're delivering 30 grades. Um, it has redundant pulse counting system at it and time. And that's the way the current free clinical system is, is uh, shipping and being used. Uh, it also comes with a set of uh, applicators and inserts for reference Q and QA. Uh, we, we, put, we, we chose three different points and a couple of different diameter sizes, field sizes, so that we get a good, a good uh, uh, variation to show the range of operation and compare it from what we make at the factory to what people see in the field so that they could do an acceptance test and feel comfortable that what we ship is what we intended to ship. We also make some other novel little things like this commissioning film holder, that goes in the water is designed to go in the water tank and attach to the end of the of the applicators and do your do some PDDs and and quick shots on on a bunch of films all at once without having to do a bunch of tedious measurements to make the QA faster and easier. So that's available and comes with the system. It also comes with a, a time of flight laser system to give you accurate measurements for when you have attachments for mice or other treatments could be humans or mice or whatever you're treating. It'll give you a nice distance range uh, at the end of the collimator very accurate and then let you go ahead and treat that uh, the distance and be confident. Also for calibrating and doing your measurements, you now have a, a way to accurately measure the distance away. Uh, from This goes from two and a half centimeters to 40 centimeters from the exit window. And when you use that and look at the range, uh, we, we've defined points A, B, C, D, and E. These are right at the surface is A and E is at the at the maximal distance down at kind of a, at a, at a uh, IORT treatment distance. It's sort of 50 centimeter distance. So this shows you in, in the bubble chart here on the right, shows you the dose at those different positions and the size of the bubble correlates to the diameter. Uh, so six and nine, uh, six is blue and, and nine is red. Um, so you can see we do, our dose ranges from almost 1400 grays a second at the, at the exit up there down to um, 150 gray or so uh, at, the, at the farthest distance away. The dotted green line shows the shortest, so the highest output shortest configuration um, as, as, uh, as an IRT type setup, and the uh, yellow dotted line shows the shortest if you had the Durham Quick Connect 360 collimator system on it that you would get. And you can kind of infer where the doses would be uh, on that point, so within that range. Um, this, this, uh, we, we are building up, we're also building a, uh, a premier cohort of researchers that are very interested in working with this. Uh, uh, the first to get our system was the CHU in Lausanne who have done a lot of the measurements. I know they treated the first human. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, MD Anderson has recently taken delivery of it and they, they just rigged it over this past weekend, in fact, and they're off playing with the dose modes now and, and uh, got, they've, got, they've got a nice comprehensive plan for commissioning it and calibrating it. Uh, the Chum in Montreal has had it for some time as well already and they, they're at the point where they're ready to begin experiments now. I certainly I believe biological experiments are underway there. Ohio State's already been doing fish eggs and they're already doing biological experiments with their system. It also shipped last year, and UC Irvine is just getting theirs. This is the lab of Charles Lamoli, who's been working and doing a lot of the work with the tubes on the radiation biology. So uh, they're they're amassing quite a quite a group there as well. Uh, Peter Maxim has just moved there, uh, formerly from Stanford and now you, 
And uh, so you've got Charles Lamoli and Peter Maxim there with an NCI grant to do Flash, and they've just now gotten our system as well. So we feel very confident that this group of people, plus several we have in the pipeline coming in the next year, will, will provide a very strong cohort of, uh, of researchers to uh, utilize this equipment. The, the translation of the Flash uh, clinically at the CHU really began two years ago with the first patient treated, and there was a, they were summarizing this paper in an issue of the Green Journal, I believe it was last year. Um, you can see it was a three and a half centimeter um, lesion of the forearm, back of the forearm, back towards the bend of the elbow. And you can see indicated at the bottom where the flash was, you can't even tell where it was in this patient. And up in the front, this patient had multiple recurrent uh, TSL lymphomas. And you can see the previous zone treated at 10 gray, 10 gray normal dose rate, uh, just did, just did left, left scarring and bad side effects. And uh, Professor Boris, I believe is on, on the call here, he could uh, describe, and I believe this patient has uh, continued to show resilient uh, response to this and no side effects. So it's it's a uh, it certainly is a durable response that he's received out of this flat first human treatment, in an obvious area where you could visualize it and take care and manage any side effects. There just don't seem to be any side effects. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they acquired the Mobitron last year. They spent spent a lot of effort uh, in a difficult year trying to uh, characterize the system, beam dosimetry, and all operational parameters have been tested. They prepared for biology and now human experiments. Uh, they've even gone so far as to do their own independent um, current transformer measurements, uh, independently monitoring our current uh, in, in various modes to, to correlate to the dosimetry they've taken. And those are both been published and turned into two manuscripts in symptomatical physics. So you'll be get to see those measurements. Uh, this community will get to see those measurements uh, come out very soon, hopefully in 2021, and, um, and, and characterize those and compare to your own experiences. Um, the, the flat, they've also announced uh, at, at a recent webinar that we had, Professor Boris uh, and, his, and his, some of his cohorts were kind enough to uh, be guest, guest lecturers on our webinar. And we recorded those and put those on our YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and put in the search, search bar, Interop Space Flash, you'll see our YouTube channel for Flash. And you'll see some of our videos we put there and his whole talk will be on there. Uh, he's, he's laid out two trials in that discussion. The first is the impulse trial which is a dose finding, a typical dose finding, um, maximum tolerated dose as an endpoint and dose limiting uh, tolerance for a, a endpoint, primary endpoints and a, a whole host of secondary uh, endpoints. Uh, this is going to escalate from 22 to 34 gray in recurrent melanoma. Uh, that's, that's, that's beginning any day now. I think he may have an update here as a, as a, matter, of, a matter of days, if not now, but that's going to begin. And I know he has patients already waiting for that trial. Uh, also, uh, in the non-melanoma skin cancer trial, that's expected to start in parallel very shortly, and that's going to randomize tumor volumes to standard of care seven by uh, five by sevens versus um, flash at 22 gray. So, uh, primary endpoints there being toxicity and tumor control. And that both trials, I believe, once they begin, Professor Boris will share those trials with the community, and others can uh, who have the same device or other similar devices can hopefully uh, try to compare results. This is some of the examples of some of the measurement I was mentioning that uh, Professor Mookley at, uh, at the CHU uh, have, have, uh, have made, and this is all turned into that medical physics uh, article. This has been submitted, so this is uh, in press now, um, as well as uh, this is some measurements we made early on, and we felt very good about our dose reproducibility in six and nine in flash mode and linearity as well for pulse. We thought those were important parameters for to be confident that you can deliver uh, what you're delivering dosimetrically until we can have real-time beam monitoring systems to measure that on the fly. Um, we also took some uh, look, look at flatness and symmetry. If you look at point A, which is the maximum dose output, this is an example with our small 2CM, 2CM field with uh, 10 pulses, uh, 6 MeV, 111 gray, 11.1 .1 gray per pulse. Uh, and that shows you the flatness and symmetry there. Across, and then there's the well for 6CM, a larger field, midway down at 9 MeV, uh, 3.6 gray per pulse. You can see the sense of, the sense of the flatness and symmetry. Um, so in summary, um, of course, FLASH off, offers the opportunity to expand the therapeutic window and radiotherapy, I mean, much more than, than we've even thought possible from uh, conformal, conformal techniques that we've seen over the last 20 years. Um, we believe both IORT and dermatology products could potentially benefit from this as long as well as all the other things everyone's thinking about for deep lesions. Uh, we've modi modified both clinical product lines to provide both conventional and FLASH dose rate modes. Uh, we announced this a couple of years ago. Uh, five sites have now shipped with more expected in 2021. 
Uh, where the tube is continuing uh, like a freight train to continue to translate to the clinic. The first human we treated two years ago. Uh, the first trial is going to, I mean, it's in a matter of days, I believe. Professor Boris is online. He can comment about that. And uh, the second trial will begin in parallel, I think, concurrently. Um, all North American users, I heard someone mention before, they didn't, weren't aware of the status of regulatory. Uh, all of users we have are already talking to the FDA or they are preparing an IDE now in their respective countries, that, that being Canada and the US. And so that's the status of, of commercially, very briefly, where we are and, and um, what we've done with Flash. 